Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. My name is Sean Dexter, and I welcome you all to the Mango Grove. I have Krisha with me here. Krisha, say hi while I while I go ahead and put up the chart. What's up, you guys? Uh, what day is it? Is today a Friday or is it today is. a Thursday? It's oh, it's a Friday. Friday. That's awesome. Happy yes. weekend to each and every one of you. I do not know how many of you are still well in lockdown. Um, it's like a weekend now. Every day is a weekend. Every day is a weekend. <laughs> well, hey, Friday is the day we begin to unwind. I um, always try to let the community know that, hey, you you know, um, life is not only about trading. You got to take some time away from the screen. Take some time away to spend with your family. Enjoy the day. And even if there's nothing to enjoy outside, if you're on lockdown, you know, just sit back, relax, enjoy some vibes and 
try to take a breather and as we go into the weekend right sometimes it's hard to immediately turn off you can't go cold turkey so i recommend unwinding on the friday take it a little bit easier regardless of how much you think this friday is important today is really important to work hard i'm going to like make it an exception and next friday i'll unwind don't do that don't fall into those habits i fell into those ha- into those habits while i was um working my copy job and um it didn't do me good so yeah unwind guys unwind definitely i'm unwinding with um a glass of wine today i've already picked it out and i'm Ooh. very excited krisha um you no longer you're getting out of that gin phase krisha was pure gin <laughs> only for a good like 3 months and she refused all offers of scotch or even good wine and now suddenly she's feeling some wine interesting you got to make change me it up <laughs> got to change it up I want you to make me one of your brother's Moscow mules this weekend by the way. Oh yes, of course. A nice little make strong the meanest Moscow mules. Let's go ahead and first confirm that everyone can hear us over here on this beautiful beautiful Friday morning. Um guys, could you confirm in the chat that the volume is not too loud, the volume is not too soft and the music's not too loud, the music's not too soft. Let me um music might be a little bit too soft. I'll go ahead and increase it just a tad bit. Let me know either way guys. I'm counting on you guys to let me know if everything's a okay. Derek Kennedy's like Krisha's unwinding. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Gonna see that one. <laughs> yes, sorry. I am. Gin on the rocks as men you can. Yes, exactly, oh, man. Yes. Um it's either neat or on the rocks. As long as you're drinking good gin, of course. Similar with scotch, right? Scotch it. scotch is I think it's um It's blasphemy to drink scotch even on the rocks. It's only neat. Not even a drop of water should be added to scotch, in my opinion. But hey, that's just my opinion. No, I agree. Sean introduced me to scotch, and I was just blown away. Absolutely blown away. But good scotch. Well, that's relative too, right? Um, yeah, to I each guess. his own when pertaining to scotch. As long as it's single malt, right? Um, it's. to each his own. Let let's go back on over to the comments. There was a good comment um or rather good question that I do want to uh address before I forget by uh Nicholas, but I'm trying to find the comment. Okay, I I can't find the comment. Oh, here it is, here it is. He says, "I opened a long position on Link BDC just before 40,000 spike and the spike wrecked all all coins. Now I'm 5% down. Should I take the loss or keep the position a few days to see what do you guys think?" So, Your question, my friend, is a big, big red flag. The fact that you don't know what to do in regards to managing a position is a huge red flag. You should always have a line in the sand as to where you are invalidated, where you are wrong about your position, and you should be getting out on your own based on the plan you had already set. You never wait to see. You never wait a few days to make up your losses, right? Yes, price may bounce, right? Price may bounce and um you may recover your losses, but that's not a plan. That's hope. That's not you being a trader. That's you gambling, right? So there's a big difference between a trader and a gambler on that front. You need to just say, "Hey man, um this trade is not going my way." um my the plan was unsuccessful it is what it is right i'll just take the next trade opportunity i'm going to take my loss and then if the trade does bounce and you did have a chance to recuperate you shouldn't feel bad about it right because the good move the right move was just taking the loss always now i'm not here to tell you what to do man i don't know what your position size is i don't know what your entire financial um situation is blah 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 i'm just giving you guys a general piece of advice in terms of taking losses learn to take losses that's what will separate you from um every other trader you can become better than 99% of the I think we lost you Sean No you're still not clear let us know guys if the audio is off just uh, mention it in the in the chat so we can kind of fix it up How about now I think okay, you should Okay better better All right yes, perfect so what was the last thing you heard me say And I think you guys should be able to hear me now. I just fixed up a couple of things, and yeah. So essentially, um, the last thing I said was, you guys can be better than ninety percent, ninety to ninety nine percent of traders out there, just by learning how to take your losses. 
All right. So, um, Kusha, uh, any charts you want to look at today? In I mean, there are a lot of people asking for a bunch of charts, but also I just wanted to mention one thing about um, um, Nicholas Pablo's uh, his his sort of uh, situation there. You took a long on Link BDC, eh? But the th so I've been mentioning this, you know, in the past. Um, when you're trading these these um, basically any altcoin against Bitcoin, you need to understand that Bitcoin right now is extremely extremely volatile, right? And you're essentially trading one bull against another bull. So yep. be very careful when you're taking those kind of trades. Now, I will give you now for those of you who are new to the channel, um, for those of you who've been here, you guys already know about this experience of mine where I did try to take. So this was last year or the year before that. I remember taking a long position on LTC BTC. And that was that was a very, very bad trade. <laughs> on my part and that totally wrecked me for like days on end because i was just so um i was just kind of so shocked with the volatility that came in so essentially i took a long position on ltc but what had happened was bitcoin okay had a volatile volatile move to the upside all right so bitcoin had this volatile move which essentially led my ltc bdc position to have a volatile move to the downside Okay, and my stop got hit, and my stop was like, um, I usually put my stop as more of a safeguard, so, but that stop got hit because it was that bad, it was that volatile. Only for LTC to then pick up steam on its USD pairing, and LTC really ran, because it was close to its halving. I think um, it had like, um, I think it was the halving news that came in for LTC, and um, LTC actually had a much, much more bullish move to the upside, and I missed that entire run. All right. Yep. So be careful when you're trading one bull against the other, when there are easier trades to be had on the USD parents. Yep. Okay. There's no um, reason to be taking um, a trade against the Bitcoin pairing in a bull market, especially when you consider what Krusha just mentioned, that um, you're adding more risk to your liquidation um, getting tapped, yes. right? Your stop losses getting tapped. Yes, you want right, the, a common mistake, right? Which is completely reasonable um, that traders may make. And like Krisha mentioned, we've made this mistake in the past. You will say, okay, I want to outperform against Bitcoin. So I'm going to trade it against Bitcoin, which is fine, right? But you don't need to take the position against Bitcoin. You can still take the position against the USD. And um, if you don't outperform against Bitcoin synthetically, you're, you're in a way taking a loss, but you're at less risk of your liquidation getting tapped because Bitcoin, the bull of this market, pushing up vol with volatility is not going to make your LTC position on the USD pairing touch your um, liquidation point or your stop loss point, right? Off. So you're not going to get shook out of positions and you, you get to stay with a calmer mind in your position and you get yeah. to manage your risk properly. So it had Kusha taken the same trade on the USD pairing, even though oh. Bitcoin had pumped, she would have still been in position and she wouldn't have had to make the mental um, decision of getting back into position after getting um, stopped out. So if she hadn't gotten stopped out and she didn't have to make that mental decision to get back into position, she'd still be in position, right? And then she would have caught that entire massive run that LTC had on um, leading into that halving. So yeah. you guys can learn from our mistakes, guys. So the thing is that, and the thing is that, you know, it w it's not the, that I would have to even wait Right, I took a loss on that trade, guys. Where, where, and if I was on the LTC USD trade, okay, I would, I would have actually been in a profit, and mm -hmm. that's what really, really hurt. I'm like, yeah. damn, you know, I picked the wrong pair there. So be very careful when playing one bull against another bull in a bull market. Yep. So, if you guys do have the um, eagerness, I know it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but um, if you guys go through the historical um, videos, the daily videos that we posted back um during the bear market during this entire bull run there are a few times where we have dedicated a few videos on just talking about our mistakes right because we make mistakes too and we are going to make mistakes in the future but each time we've taken the time to do a dedicated video on the mistakes why not only so that it helps you guys so much but it helps us solidify um these ideas in our heads so we don't make those same mistakes again in the past 
sometimes there were mistakes on missed opportunities because of a bad psychological um, misstep by me like we've talked about that big shot that I missed over here right because I got greedy and I tried to get cute at my shot position and get so essentially I'd gone shot right at the right time on this weekly candle open okay I'll go ahead and talk to you guys about it quickly the entire this entire period right people were bearish on bitcoin but i was still remaining bullish until the right time because i always talk to you guys about how there are three parts to a trade getting the right direction getting the right timing and then getting the right execution so i got the right timing right because just on that weekly open i'd opened up the daily video by saying hey guys i am finally bearish on bitcoin i'm taking a short position right so i put on a nice thick short position and um, so I got the timing right. I also got the direction right. But guess what? I got my execution wrong because it was either t Tuesday or Wednesday, like a day or two into the week, where I got a little bit uh, cute, where I saw a falling wedge onto this little support line over here, right? I saw a falling wedge onto the support line over here. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play for a little bounce. I'm going to play for a little bounce and then get a better short position. You know, I wanted, wanted to get a little bit greedy, essentially. And guess what happened? It just kept going, right? So I essentially closed out my short position and I wanted to re-add somewhere around here. Somewhere around here, maybe, I don't know, somewhere a little higher, right? And it just kept going, going, going. And I was like, are you serious? All I had to do was stay in my position. So you guys can learn from those kind of mistakes. Um, there are a few others that we talk about that were pivotal, right? These are mistakes that uh, you guys can learn from. So. Absolutely. And also good, lots of good things that we've done after learning from those mistakes. So I used that to my advantage and stayed in many great positions. Like when, when we caught this um, r this move over here, we stuck to our plan. We longed around 7,500 to 7,700. Stayed in that position for a good couple of weeks. And boom, caught this huge move towards the upside. Similarly, we use our mistakes to our advantage. Yep. Now let's go ahead, dissect some charts. I feel like the market has done quite a bit. Um, we have not gone over Bitcoin. So guys, we're first gonna start off with Bitcoin because yesterday I kind of mentioned something to Sean was that I noticed that find a lot of you, you know, you guys are here and that's awesome, but very few of you really talking about Bitcoin. And uh, actually, I Kusha, that now, th now that you mention it, uh, Mambo for Life just asked, for this, this is the first time he's asking a question on Bitcoin. So this would be a good uh, segue to actually answer his question. And again, buddy, thank you for the tip. If BDC is trading sideways right now, isn't that when alts pump? Why is no money flowing into alts? And they are going down a bit. That is such a good question. The reason that's a good question is because I get to um, do this, zoom out and ask you, is Bitcoin going sideways, buddy? What 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 is sideways about this chart, right? Try not to get focused on the lower time frames. If you look at even the, in fact, even the lower time frames, mid time frames to lower time frames, are up, man. This is, this is trending up and up and up. Remember what we talked about in the beginning of this week, Mamba. There's something very specific we said. We said as long as Bitcoin is ranging between 35k and 30k, alts have a chance. But as soon as Bitcoin breaks 35k towards the upside. That's it, man. Again, also going to look weaker to me, at least to me, compared to Bitcoin. And that's exactly what we're seeing. This is trending up, buddy. Uh, it, it's respecting everything that we've been talking about, right? I've, I kept it simple, right? I'm not as complex and fancy as Krisha. I looked at 35K and then I looked at 40K. And what do you know, guys? Look at that, yeah. right? You guys will learn so much by just going back and watching the streams throughout this week because you guys get a glimpse into our mindset leading into all of this. 35k, next level was 40k. Where did we stop? 40k. Boom. Yeah. Um, but what was I going to say? Um, in terms of, you know, Bitcoin actually getting that consolidation in on some of these um, lower time frames, what you guys need to understand is that we haven't even lost like the four hour uptrend. Like, we're, forget the. F Dude, we're, we're trending currently on that four hour 10 simple moving average. We haven't even gotten down to the 21 EMA. And until and unless we lose that 4-hour 21 EMA, I won't be looking for any sort of serious consolidation from Bitcoin. So at yep. the very least, if we're looking for sideways movement, if I am looking for sideways movement um, on Bitcoin, I will be looking at how price reacts relative to that 4-hour 21 EMA because that is going to be the first tip off. Right. Yep. So until and unless we lose that, I think that we could. I mean, this could see continuation to the upside. Now, I know that a lot of people like they they got caught off um, with the volatility that entered as soon as we hit that 40K region last uh, yesterday. Um, 
guys. And this is something that I've been harping on about, is that everyone wants to see the volatility to the upside, and let me tell you something, we've seen the same volatility to the upside, and no one had any qualms with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we saw that equal volatility to the downside, and then everyone just lost their shit suddenly. So, and this is what I keep telling you guys about, you know, be careful if you're taking your trades, account for this kind of, these kind of moves. If you're seeing these kind of moves to the upside, expect to see the same sort of volatility to the downside as well. Yep. And prepare, prepare for it. Good point, Krisha, so really, really yeah, good just point. To, just to stop on that one. So last night, um, instead of um, actually sleeping, I was uh, keeping an eye on the comments in the Grove, um, the Discord Grove, as well as the Discord Seed. And I got a, I got it handed out to you guys, uh, not to um, take anything away from those of you who are on the Grove chat, but those of you who are in the Seed, especially since I've seen so many of you guys develop over the years, it was so great to see the stark contrast in the uh, mentality or rather the sentiment in that chat in the private c chat versus the grove right in the grove people are panicking there were people who were like oh my god what am i going to do bitcoin is down two thousand dollars now i've lost so and so and in the seed um wolvi later was like hey man so how's the weather over there <laughs> <laughs> like people are talking about the weather and talking about I'm um, just being calm, doing it mango, doing the stress free way, you know, understanding that hey, yes, uh, markets pull back, markets trend, and markets get picked up. We've been talking about this again just yesterday. We talked about how markets don't go up in a straight line, they um, have pullbacks, right? Trends aren't a arrow, trends are wavy, right? So how are you expecting this one straight line? Even if you guys do your back tests on the charts, there's always pullbacks, right? So control your emotions and keep it mango. Think about the beach. Boom. Um, guys, just let us know. Like for some reason, Sean, you were breaking up for me just now. If um, the audio is okay, I just want to make sure it's it's just me and not everyone else here. I think it might just be you, Krisha. I Possibly. think I'm fine. I but but let us know if the music volume is too low. Um, I think Tornado New England did say the music was too low, so I put it up a little bit. And hey, he did just tip us. Thank you very much. Can we look at Litecoin on that note? You guys are the best. Hey, thank you, man. You are the best too. Let me go ahead and look at LTC Thanks, for you. LTC USD. Um, I am keeping an eye on LTC. As you guys know, I do have a position. And LTC is doing um, pretty good. So here's, the, here's my game plan with LTC. It's one of my mango trades. I am looking at this on the weekly and I'm not looking at it too often, right? Why? Because this is a weekly trade. This is a high time frame trade. I'm looking at this massive structure that has broken towards the upside, got the perfect retest, has been bought back on the retest really nicely, put in a new weekly high, and this is going to have pullbacks. Just like how Ethereum and Bitcoin had massive impulsive moves, saw consolidation and then had their next impulsive move, this may very well also have an, uh, have some consolidation. Now, you guys got a opportunity, especially those of you guys who are on the seed, because I posted a chart on this in the seed plays um, on the Monday morning, right? And I got my position in, but right after I got my position in, this came back and tested the major level that we showed on the chart. So you guys had a chance to buy at a better position than even me. And by that, um, logic you guys also have a better mindset or rather easier stress-free trade right the lower you buy it's always easier to buy so that was a key level that got retested got rebought and now we're seeing continuation but it's going to take its time this may keep going which is why i said hey you know what i want to be part of this trend it may come back down but i'm going to be getting my position anyways because how many times how many times have you guys waited for a position to pull back right and you don't get that pullback and then you miss out on a 100% move or 200% move because you are waiting for a um, 5 or 15% move towards the downside. This was a 7% move towards the downside. I was okay with it happening without me. And um, now I'm just waiting. And now I'm just waiting. If you look at the lower time frames, it's doing good things in my opinion it's put in a high high yesterday after bitcoin had its up thrust it uh, put in a new high at around 181 it has higher lows as well i am not too concerned about the lower time frames but this doesn't look too bad at all so that's my thoughts man i'm looking for eventual targets to around 235 ish to 250 ish right there's going to be pit stops on the way the most um 
near resistance that we are looking to take out is right over here at around 180. That's exactly where we came and tested, of course, yesterday. So that's good. Next level will be here, 220. And then we have a zone right over here at 250. Right, that's my target. Yeah, now I agree with your um, analysis on this. So but Mamba... is actually looking really good. Very neat trade. Yeah. I like it, yeah. Re really clean trade. Really I have no expectations of this outperforming Bitcoin. I'm just trading it on the USC chart and taking it mango. So Mamba for Life, Kisha asked a um, good question again. What will sideways trading look like? Can you give an example and what time frame should we look at? Sideways tra uh, trading should be um, no lower than the daily time frame, man. No lower than the daily time frame. So let's go ahead and give you an example. Bitcoin was sideways trading right over here, right? during this period right over here there are two periods this entire zone over here actually between um let's see between 15th of may leading to this ichimoku breakout on the 22nd of july right over here so this was a sideways movement right you can see it ranging 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 until it broke structure right over here so that was sideways then over here too we had sideways ranging and where else this was sideways as well this movement over here right when you're putting essentially when you're in consolidation right when you're in consolidation no matter what the structure whether it be the descending triangle an ascending triangle um or just literally a range between two horizontals that is your opportunity to to look for all coins to be running it's not you know you know one mistake a lot of people make especially in crypto they take it for um like it like a hundred percent deal that if bitcoin is going sideways all coins have to pump no no that is not true if bitcoin is going sideways that's your first green flag to then look if all coins want to move right you could be wrong about that then you look for more signs and more confirmations within the all coins right so it's not as black and white man man but don't fall for the things that you're going to hear in other trading communities be very careful this game is not as easy as people make it out to seem okay don't fall for that stuff yeah and i think the number one thing that everyone hears um is well you know bitcoin needs to stop running for alts to run that's absolute nonsense okay yes also you guys can see the charts i mean the charts are in front of you we've been dissecting the charts now for days on end um if you're looking at all the altcoins on their usd pairings they're all running it's not like they're not running people are looking for their altcoins to run against bitcoin but in that, um, you know, in that vein, they always tend to get into laggards. Sometimes they'll see that oh, Bitcoin is doing nothing, and they're looking at some of the lower time frames, and they end up catching an altcoin that they're likely going to end up getting wrecked on. So be very, very careful on what sort of narrative you actually catch out there. Indeed. Question it. Learn how to question it. So, um, Kusha, uh, Kenido Grant says, did you guys go over a theme already? And actually, we haven't. Thank you for the reminder. Let's quickly check out a theme, Kusha. Um, what do you know? Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. It actually closed right underneath our level. So, on the Discord last night, we were actually talking about this. Somebody asked about whether he should long Ethereum um, because it was above the level, right? I said, hey, no, not yet. Wait for tomorrow's candle close. And by the way, guys, when I say tomorrow's candle close, I mean the current day's candle close. Of course, it, it means tomorrow for me because when I wake up tomorrow, I'm looking at the candle close, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. Where's Saeed, by the way? Saeed, you're not here, buddy. Where are you? Where are you? Anyways, we were having this discussion and we said, wait for the confirmation before you get a little bit too excited. And what do you know? We close underneath the horizontal to the T. And now, um, yeah, just a waiting game, waiting game over here. I think what are your thoughts? Um... It looks good. The Ethereum actually looks really good. It's it's seeing. I mean, we're we're watching many of these alls actually see that um, on the lower time frames at the very least. Right now, they all see that continuation to the upside. I think if Ethereum actually manages to close over now, this is I'm looking at the daily time frame. Okay, and then wow. these are the things that you need to look for when you're looking at price relative to levels. So if you notice now, the one region that we were looking at yesterday, Sean, was that 1,230-ish region as resistance overhead. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, the daily did not clo close over that, right? Yep. We saw a wick all the way up, yes, but only for that last daily candle to close under. 
Yep. And I think that if we start seeing daily candle body closes over that 1,230-ish region, I will personally be looking for continuation for it right now. And this buyback on the daily is freaking phenomenal. Of course, now we have quite a few more hours left on this candle. So. Turn on your mango dynamic on the 12 hour time frame and i've been keeping a very strong eye on the 12 hour time frame not just on ethereum but on bitcoin too and look at that candle look at how well we got picked up over there like it was the perfect um buy opportunity mm -hmm. um of course i did not catch this one but uh this 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 gives me information now of moving into the market by the way guys for those of you who um like using indicators to keep your lives easy and stress-free make sure that you're not trading it black and white hey look across the different time frames and use it f use it first as information so for, for example let's say ethereum right over here okay this entire structure over here by the way was a lot like bitcoin's um structure against the dynamic on the 40 something very very similar right you have a horizontal where you're trading underneath it you don't need to get into a trade just yet now we retook it all right cool we retook it it doesn't mean that it's going to go just yet wait for the confirmation cool you have your confirmation and um you have your confirmation above the level. Now you can build a starter position. Okay, you don't need to build the full position just yet. Because remember, we still have a horizontal over here to contend with. Okay, cool. So now we have a starter position. Boom, break the horizontal as well. Build your position a little bit more. All right, cool. Trend starts continuing and showing that, hey, your trending indicator is working. And this might be one of those big trend runs. Because remember, when you're trend trading, you don't need every single trade to work. In fact, you could get away with only a 35% win rate. If you ever hear traders um, brag about their win rate, by the way, that's a red flag. That's a red flag that that trader probably isn't um, isn't really trading because any real trader knows that win rate does not matter, right? You could be extremely, in fact, I would go ahead and argue that most traders who are extremely successful have a lower win rate because you could have a 35% win rate, but those wins that you do get are monster wins, right? Now, because we are in crypto, um, because we are in the crypto space right now, you can have both. You can have a massive win rate as well as monster wins because crypto markets are trending like freaking like you've like you've not seen since the 1970s commodities markets right but that's not usually the case so be very careful with that anyways off topic uh let's get back on right over here now when we get the retest of the of your trending indicator in our case it's the mango dynamic boom that's your that's your time to add fully and strongly to your position that's your that's your guide to or that's your confirmation to go hard and you have your big move get your retest, another uh, opportunity to add to your position. As soon as you lose the trend, you get out. You're invalidated, okay? You get out in profits and you're done, right? And look at that, look at that, right over there. Brilliant. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and look at the Mango Dynamic on Bitcoin. I wonder how it performed last night. BTC. Wow, Bitcoin hasn't come down to test the Dynamic ever since. Um, Again, by the way, same same trade setup, by the way, on Bitcoin, guys. But Bitcoin showing its strength, right? Um, it tested the Mango Dynamic on these levels over here, all the way back at um, the beginning of the year. So not too long ago, but you had your opportunity. As soon as we broke 30,000, came back, defended every single ma Mango Dynamic level and continuation now. It did not come down to test it again. So really strong, really strong. Until we lose, um, as in right now, there's no reason to be bearish, not entirely, not at all, actually, on Bitcoin. It's currently a range. I mean, this is the range that we were looking at. So basically 36,200-ish, going all the way up to um, 40K. This is the current zone that Bitcoin is oscillating within. So until we break to either side. Um, yep. I won't be looking for I won't won't be looking to take any sort of bearish stance not until we break support let's look at Cardano because I'm interested on Cardano too or Mango Dynamic oh wow okay so my, uh, Cardano and Ethereum are behaving very similarly Bitcoin of course is showing more strength it did not come down to test the dynamic but Cardano giving you a perfect buyback again just like Ethereum at around 26 cents um for those of you guys who have been following this entire week our levels for Cardano were 22 cents right that was the level we broke towards the upside on the four hour time frame. We were looking for that consolidation. We drew it out before, before it actually happened, right? He said that, all right, cool. We smacked up against 22 cents. 
Now, what do you look for next? Yes, we got rejected, right? Let me hide the horizontals for a sec. Yes, we got rejected over there. But then we are like, okay, now let's look for higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, right? Putting in an ascending triangle against that major weekly level. If we then break, look for the retest, which we did break. We got the retest. That's where Krishna and I built our position and boom, next target was 35 cents and we hit it to the T, right? If you're looking at the weekly levels, your levels, your targets more right, more like around 37 cents. But um, you can kind of bring it down low if you want to, to front run the sell offs to a round number, right? So if it's 36 cents, 37 cents, you can be a little bit safer with your take profits. If you're if you're trading it support to resistance, by the way, um, and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take my profits at around 35 cents because why risk it, right? Especially Cardano, by the way, you guys are going to see it um, get front run a lot. I've been victim to Cardano missing my take profit in the past. Cardano looks freaking amazing. Got a very, very swift pickup on the Mango yeah. Dynamic. Yeah, but at the moment, it's just a waiting game. Don't, guys, don't, don't, um, don't form onto a trade. Be patient. Take it level by level. You're going to get buy opportunities. Yesterday was one. Um, don't buy into resistance if you did not if you're closer to resistance stay away from the trade wait for the resistance to flip and then get into your trade right it's as simple as that trading can be as simple if you control your psychology you okay the hard part about trading is actually keeping it simple because there's going to be a lot of information distilling that information that information and knowing what to look at is going to be key Kadana, Kadana, what else? Give us more, um, few more altcoin requests. So XLM, XLM or VeChain, Sean, heck, oh, XRP also, by the way, ripped, I think, yesterday with Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm surprised, there's literally only one person, I think, that mentioned XRP. People might be stung on that one. Let's go ahead and look at XRP. What's going on with XRP? Um, XRP. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, it bounced, but when you see a vol, okay. So guys, expect this, all right? When you see a volatile move towards the downside or towards the upside, you're gonna get an equal and opposite reaction, right? So the volatility is now priced in. So because people are positioning themselves according to the volatility, the order books are gonna be a lot thinner and move um with that volatile movement right that's all he had in the past that's why you have things like vix people are always measuring volatility when trading the markets i think it's looking uh, it's looking decent against resistance right now i think if we close the weekly over 32 cents guys i think we may actually take another leg up that's gonna be critical though the next weekly close and, and we're kind of very close to the next close right close in about two days so that's one level that I personally will be watching out for. 32 cents. Yep. What else? XLM. Let's do one on XLM. And someone's been mentioning Ampleforth. I think Sean was the first person actually who mentioned Ampleforth to me, but this was back in the summer. Yeah, I don't think there's any chart. Um, I was looking at Ampleforth and that was a massive win, but not a big enough position um back when it was around 2 million mcap man i i i'm feeling a little stung on that one because that was that was one of the only coins i was looking at in terms of um low caps and it looked really interesting i liked what they were doing in terms of a uh, fundamental pers perspective but uh not uh, i didn't i didn't have the conviction to go ahead and put a big enough size on that one uh, but <laughs> i had a stinking feeling that I w that one was going to do well and yeah it did fantastically well so you can't you can't ever be upset about uh winning a trade right but what you can be upset about is not going ahead with the original position size that you had intended on going so that uh, ample thought was a lot like lend in it was a missed opportunity in how big that trade could have been. That one had like some amazing gains. I think um, had life changing games gains for a lot of people. Amp fourth. That was during the whole Uniswap pipe. Mm -hmm. The Defy market. Yeah. Right. I remember explaining what they were doing to you like way before anyone 
um, even knew about Ampleforth. Like I was talking to you about it like way, way, way back then, right? Because I was reading up everything on what they were doing. I, was, I found it really, really interesting. I didn't agree with every single thing that they were doing, of course, but I... F Okay, this is okay. I'll, t I'll tell you guys my biggest mistake with that one because I was talking to a, a few friends about it too before it picked up hype, and I said that I don't know whether the crypto market uh, or the current market participants would understand what they are doing. So I'm not sure whether it'll pick up hype. What they're doing might be too complicated for people to actually figure out, and that was a big mistake, right? Me underestimating what the market can or cannot figure out. You should never ever make that assumption. Right, the market's always smarter than you, man. The market's always smarter than you. Nin Nguyen says, everyone, please hit the like button. Yes, please. 205 watching. And there's only 44 likes. Guys, yeah, we Jesus need to Christ. Know that you, well, like these live streams. I will be doing a tally, by the way, um, at the end of this week. So um, it's going to help me gauge whether or not, you know, you guys like these live streams. That way we know to spend more time doing them. So definitely let us know. There we go. Are they picking up? There we go. 58 likes now. Let's get that up to 70, guys. Come on. All right. Let's see now. Um, more suggestions. Um, Sayed second. Came in. Sayed Sayed is sorry, in here. I'm late. Yeah, he's, he, it's 2.45 a.m. where he is. Oh, damn. I feel bad. Aw. Damn. You need to sleep. Ooh, Krisha, look at Fresh band. Mind. Fresh eyes. Band. Sayed, we were talking about you, man, in the beginning of this. Um, not too much in the beginning, so you can kind of scroll back a little bit, uh, maybe 10 minutes ago. Band you broke the what's... structure towards the upside, tested our next level already. So this thing moved and moved fast. I was getting alerts on this one, but I did not take the trade. As you guys can see, I set up alerts on band on this horizontal here and this horizontal here. I didn't take either of the trades. I was busy with something else. Yeah, someone actually mentioned it in yesterday's live stream, but um, I think we kind of skipped that one, Band. And um, while you were, I don't know, you were giving them some of your wisdom, I actually pulled it up on my chart. I'm like, holy moly, we actually got the break yesterday, yeah. and it's it's a perfect retest. Band so, is looking phenomenal here. As you guys know, I was uh, I have all the drawings right over here still from back when we covered it last time, we talked about the structure here, these these circles I've drawn, right, being really important. And breaking that level over there would be the next easy, easy trade, the mango trade. And what do you know, if you zoom out, you're going to see that we come up and we're finding resistance right on that um, juncture right over there at around $9.50. So, yeah, band looking really good, man. I think eventually it is going to break through 980, um, 950, 980 ish. And once it does, it's going to have this entire zone of volatility of um, like gap fill, you could call it, all the way up to $15. It's going to float from around 10 ish to 15 ish. So that's a good trade from 10 to 15 to be had right over there. Yeah. It's looking uh, phenomenal here. Band. I mean, t taking a position over here too wouldn't be too bad, but uh, let's see, let's see, let's look, let's look at the daily. Yeah, actually, the daily looks really good. Daily looks really good. Looks like some, um, Kusha, what do you call this? A, what is this? No, I wouldn't call it any pattern. It's broken the structure. It's retesting it. This looks good. On the daily, this looks really good. If it breaks above, if it closes the daily above $9, I'm expecting these highs to get retested at 963. If it takes out 963, I'll be looking for even the horizontal to break eventually. It doesn't need to do it in the next day or so, but eventually the horizontal would, would crack, retest the horizontal, that's the easy trade. So building a trade over here, adding over here, looking for the big move to 15 would be the band trade. So yeah, this is a good, this is a good um, trade, man. Definitely a good chart. Whoever brought it up, good find. Yep. Good um, find on band. It was second Tim32 and Tornado. They both asked for it. And um, Link. Let's go ahead and look at Link as well. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are interested in that. Link Great. seeing that um, resistance. Uh, retest of what? I'm not looking I'm at the looking same level. Yeah, no. I'm looking at a diagonal on Link. That I was oh. looking for it to break, and I think we actually found we got that break. Okay, I don't have um, that diagonal on mine. Yeah, but, this um, one is I'll take your word for it. Fifteen dollars. Oh, okay. Fifteen dollars and yeah, around twenty-ish cents. Um, what level are you looking at, Sean? 
I'm just looking at this um, zone over here between um, 17 and 1655 to break. As you guys can see, by the way, that we did close above the zone, but we didn't confirm above it. Someone in the comment section, I do believe, asked for um, what do you mean by confirmation? This is one example of confirmation. It's not the only way, but um, this is one example, right? If I were looking for this pivotal zone, we have been talking about the zone over here for freaking months, man. Ever since here, I've been talking about the zone and we rejected the zone over here too, back in November. And now we came in, we closed above it, but we didn't have another um, candle close above it. I want to see, so I want to see an open and a close twice above it, right? We get two candles living above um, $17 and I'm like, all right, cool. This is now looking good. Now we can look for the move to around $20. And once we crack 20, I'll be looking to 30, but we didn't get that. So patience. Oh, by the way, I am in link. So it's easier for me to be patient when I'm already in the position. Um, I'm not going to be telling you guys where to buy and how to buy. That's not what we do over here at Mango. Yeah. It's true. Macro confirmation, I think is going to, you said, um, you said you had a target at $16, right? Um, not a target, a zone of resistance. Uh, sorry, yes, a zone of resistance. Apologies. Um, you said at sixteen dollars, sixteen. Sixteen to sixteen to seventy. Sixteen yeah. fifty to seventy ish. Yeah, somewhere. I'll be there. looking at that as like a level of confirmation to see, um, to figure out whether or not Link could actually see cont continuation. But this is on the weekly time frame. So personally, I think that confirmation is going to come in on those high time frames, specifically the weekly. So if we can have a candle body close over that, then I'm seeing continuation for Link. Yep, I think Link again. Um, for those of you who've not been tuning in for the longest time, uh, for this entire week, for the longest time, I've been talking about this monthly structure on Link. I'm looking for this bull flag like structure to break towards the upside. It's looking fantastic on the monthly, guys, and that's what I'm keeping my eyes on. Fifteen dollars and sixty cents. If we close the monthly above that, I want to see a nice full body candle above it or rather a nice close above it right if we can close above um let's say 1750 on the monthly right that would be good enough for me to picture this can this structure broken on the monthly time frame after that any retest of around 1554 is going to be a really nice buy opportunity even 14 dollars would be fantastic if we dip down over there of course remember monthly time frame you gotta allow for that volatility on the lower time frames that's gonna be huge not sure we get it though to be honest I think Link is gonna like rip after that, man. It's gonna have a move kind of like how Ethereum did over the next few months. Gotta be patient though. Gotta be patient. Guys, try not to like go for the quick wins. Um, I'll let you know that that's how you end up getting the quick losses too. Keep calm, keep patient. If you find yourself refreshing your tab trader or your delta delta right it's that's what the, the other app is called but either way if you're refreshing coin market cap tab trader all the time um that's a big red flag that you're you're setting yourself up for failure in this market this market's gonna take place over months yeah. let me show you guys something let me show you guys something okay um, those of you who are thinking back to the previous bull market and you're asking yourselves or telling yourselves, yeah, I should have bought Ethereum at $50 and I would have held all the way to $1,000, I would have done this, I would have done that. Now, consider your emotions over the past um, over the past few days, right? When you guys are seeing prices fluctuate as much as they are. Think about those emotions and I want you guys to go all the way back to this period over here. Okay, to around uh, 2017 May-ish, when Ethereum went from around $80, 50-ish, all the way up to 300 Okay, then we had this big Coinbase move. Um, disregard this, we can talk about this some other time. Happened only on Coinbase. But I want you guys to consider that we literally went sideways. Okay, I'll pull up a fresh chart so you guys don't get distracted by my horizontals. Okay, we went sideways for how many weeks? <laughs> okay, 154 days, 22 weeks, guys. We just ranged between 370 all the way down to 155 to 256, right? That was the range. Like, Ethereum looked a very, very toppy at around 300-ish to a lot of people. And even though we're in a bull market, they were looking to sell. And I know more than a few people that sold all their Ethereum, all their Ethereum at around 300-ish. Was it a bad move? No, I don't want to say yes or no, right? It's on them, their financial situation. But if you're selling because you think that we're 
definitely topping out over here, that was the wrong move. That's what I can say. Because you don't know where the top is going to be until the top is confirmed. And it takes a little bit more than just looking at the price and looking at this over here and saying, hey, it's toppy. Um, it doesn't work that way. So what, what ended up happening? You have to wait 22 weeks, 154 days, which is five months, almost half a year. And then what happens? We go from 300-ish all the way to 1400, right? That's a massive difference in where you sell. Selling at 350-ish versus selling at 1450-ish, right? So would you have been able to have sat through all these emotions, considering that a lot of you guys are feeling emotional on these daily movements? Would you have sat through Ethereum going from 400-ish all the way down to 140 right 140 it, this happened i remember this happening and people losing their shit right <laughs> people thinking this was over this is the top they're coming all the way back down to ten dollars i remember all of that all of that and we were buying over here because me yeah yeah this is where we accumulated a lot of ethereum like we are completely fine buying higher and higher right as long as our risk management is in place we'll take that risk in the direction of the trend the trend was up man it looks so beautiful and that yeah, was but just... such a beautiful ascending triangle too and then that's the thing right it's just about waiting in those in those periods and just being okay you know having that that risk management in, in place to be okay sitting through those drawdowns yep think about um your emotions uh, sit through your sit through this entire period guys and i want you guys to reflect on how you guys would have emotionally reacted to this to this price action Let's get into the comments section. Um, Tornado says, fantastic point. This is why we love Mango. <laughs> Thanks, man. Really glad that this information is helping you guys. That's why we're here. Let's scroll, scroll. What else? Any requests? We just closed a 4-hour candle, Krisha. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin's 4-hour candle close. It's pretty important. And uh, yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. Not bad. Let's see. Maybe we're, we're maybe you get your... Higher lows. Higher lows are intact, my friends. What do you say? What were you about to say? Maybe you're getting your what? Your sideways action on the lower time frames, <laughs> Mamba. Um, yeah, I think all coins are going to have these small windows of opportunity for them to take legs up, uh, leg ups. But um, don't, don't expect them to outperform Bitcoin, man. Just don't like, have that expectation and you'll be fine. Like, let's look at Cardano, right? Yes, they went down. It, it went down, as did many other all coins, but they all get picked up. They all get picked up again. Um, let's look at LTC. What's LTC doing? Yep, LTC back up to 162 as well. Just got to be patient, man. It's a bull market. Jason Wheat um, asks, is the mango dynamic the same as the vine? How do we get it? Uh, the mango dynamic is not yet available. I wanted to trade it myself for a good um, year and a half before. Well, actually, a year is good enough, but I was being a little bit too... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Too conservative with with that You've been aggressively so. i mean sean has been aggressively aggressively testing the mango dynamic and that's why you know we've taken we're taking I, our time because i really. i don't believe in um back testing being enough back testing is important but i believe forward testing is just as not just it's far more important right you need to test it on the market with money and on that note by the way um this is a point where Krisha and i kind of i don't say disagree but defer on like she's a big believer of paper trading and i'm a big believer of uh, trading with real money regardless of how low the account is so if you guys are new definitely first start with paper trading that didn't ever sit well with me though i it didn't work for me i needed to put in money on the account and go through the emotions of losing money if, even if it's a little bit right so for example you guys can put eight thousand dollars into your account and pretend it is a hundred thousand dollar account or pretend it's a million dollar account and then every loss is also multiplied so if you lose a um, dollar 
on your hundred dollar account or your thousand dollar account multiply it uh by one thousand dollars and that's your real loss that's a one thousand dollar loss right so let's say okay do this for those of you who are new put a put a hundred dollars into your account pretend it's a hundred thousand dollars if you lose one dollar that's actually a thousand dollar loss and trade it that way forward forward test your um indicators forward test your psychology more importantly and um yeah that's very important and that's similar to why i haven't been um uh giving access out to the mango dynamic unless you are a seed member who i know you can trust i can trust you with it and i know that you're going to be you know responsible and now that i've actually tested it through an entire all coin cycle an entire bitcoin move ethereum move blah blah i'm feeling a lot more confident about it so yeah, yeah. i think it's um worth it green mango dynamic um hey guys could you please so this is rishi visa Hey guys, could you please have a look at Inj, I-N-J, USD. I think the fundamentals are pretty solid. Fundamentals. We don't um, look at the fundamentals, but we can look at the chart and tell you if the fundamentals back it up. And uh, this is... Mm. High time frames first. Ah, oh, looks good. I mean, it's been on a, on a rip. It's actually pretty good. It's actually a really good chart, man. Yeah. Rishi, I'm not sure if that's a... If you're a guy or a girl, so a, I think it's a guy's name. No? It's a girl's name. Yeah. Guys. Rishi. All right. Um, this looks good. If it breaks uh five dollars, this is going. This is gonna keep continuing. It's gonna have its next impulsive move, most likely. Um, to let's see. I uh, measured move to around six dollars and fifty cents ish. Yeah. All right. This looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it out actually. This actually looks really good. You know what this reminds me of? Um, was it Elrond? This reminds yeah. me of Elrond. Yeah, Elrond was a nice win thanks to you guys. Thank you for that one. Just like Cardano, man. You can spot these shots out for me. And <laughs> yeah, these these streams yeah. are as helpful to us as as they are to you, by the way, guys. So thank you all. Thank you all. Um, yeah, this shot looks good. Freaking phenomenal. Good find on this. So yes, the um, fundamentals pack up the technicals. Tornado. Rather, the technicals pack up the fundamentals. Yeah, tornado ask um, zone of resistance is um, five dollar. Um, you can actually mark out a zone if you want. There you go. Since you asked, you can mark out this level two at five thirty six. So five to five thirty six. Make your life easy. Like so. Beautiful chart. Uma USDT. Somebody asked for. Oh, this looks uh, looks bad on Binance, man. At least I don't know. Looks too wiki for me. No. I don't know. Could be doing something, but um, I'm seeing opportunity cost. The the sell offs are insane. Like this, this wick action is crazy. But we we are putting in a bullish sort of um, structure on those yeah. higher time frames. Okay, so that's something to note. But if it breaks know, ten, think... if it breaks ten fifty ish, there's probably gonna be a volatile move towards the upside. Position yeah. size very, very carefully, guys. If you're looking at these kind of charts, right? Because when you're seeing these wicks towards the upside, they could very well happen towards a downside too, and it could be painful. But then again, I don't think any of these coins are available on leverage, so I don't know how you guys are trading it. I wouldn't touch yeah. this personally. I wouldn't touch this, but um. Do if you, you are, though, you. be careful on the low sat coins because those coins tend to move, have these volatile, volatile moves. Like you can lose 20%, 30% in no time. So be extremely careful. Careful. So somebody asked for Thai Bridge, and this is the second time it's being asked for. I'm not sure what the ticker is, man. You, you're going to have to tell me the ticker. Thai, I, think, uh. I think you just had it there. Thai USDT. Is it Thai? On I'm going to go. Okay. Mm. I feel like I always need coin market cap opened up. In oh my god, this thing just pumped. So yeah, this this is pumping, man. Not much you can t say. There's no TA to be done once you get an impulsive move. Just consolidation after that, and you can just once things start in motion and reactions likely to keep going in motion. Um, there's le there's some resistance over here at around a dollar fifty to a dollar sixty. Right after that, you have these levels over here. I don't know, man. This thing can just keep going, or it could have. Now that's called an imp an impulsive move to the upside. That right there. How do you how do you even catch that? This is the, what XRP trends like. Trends. Yeah. You can't even call this a trend, really. It's just one big pump. <laughs> Can you look at XLM? We looked at XLM yesterday, man. 
a few times. We'll go ahead and take a look at, at it quickly. It's looking good. Very good. XLM. It's still sitting up against the same resistance we talked about yesterday, man. Take a screenshot of this right over here. Resistance. Um, if it breaks this, then next level is up 50 cents. If it breaks 50, then you're looking at around 63 to around 75. Zone of support currently is around 20 cents. You could mark the middle of the range if you want to. Coming in around 23 to 25 cents, right? So somewhere around there. Right? Yeah. That could be a level two to buy to buy a higher low. The critical can close is is going to come in on that next week. So as so that so the Monday, the coming Monday is going to be a very very important day for many of the altcoins because as things stand right now, if you find that a lot of the altcoins are sitting up against resistance on those high time frames, I'm looking at the weekly time frame. So if um, these coins actually manage to close over that critical point of resistance, I think we're likely going to see the alts run again. Yep. So um, watch out for that. For those of you who are really, really, who are still in your positions, that next weekly close is going to be an important one. Indeed. So yeah, Delvinder says, Del Delvinder Singh says, you guys rock. Thank you so much. Hey man, you are very welcome. Um, hey, uh, Siddharth Mishra is here. Good to see you in here, Siddharth. He says, love every live stream, daily dose of education. Hey, yeah, that's what Mango is about. That's what Mango is about always going to be about it's going to be about education probably um going to be our um, main focus unlike other channels i will tell you buy here buy there this is what Bitcoin's going to do that's what ethereum's going to do um what we are going to tell you is that we know nothing and we take it step by step and we play the probability because the only thing that is certain in this world is uncertainty arrogance and bluster will be punished and should be punished boom wow sean <laughs> That's very deep. Link USD. We already covered Link USD. Man Patel. Um, yeah. The Shard um, Ready says, "Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you too, buddy." Synthetics. Blake says, "Is that um SNX Synthetics?" Yeah, SNX. Someone else just mentioned it. I was about Oof. to say that. Loud. Yeah, this one was a beautiful chart, but um, it is trending without us. Okay, so it's, it's looking good on the 4-hour time frame. Um, if it does break, almost every altcoin had the wall time move because of USD's wall time move towards downside. I wouldn't pay too much heat towards this, but what you want to see these altcoins do, and that's going to be your sign of strength, is for those altcoins to retake the level that it, that it did break because of wall, Bitcoin's wall time move. So over here, for example, Syntax, SNX. Um, the key level was around eleven $11.50, right? It broke it. Okay, cool. So let's say you're bullish on this asset. What you want it what you wanted to see is two things. One, will it defend its next level, which is somewhere around here? Both of these levels are all key. Low time frames, right? Low time frames. But um, it retook all those levels. It defended all those levels and retook all of those levels. So this is looking good. If it breaks above thirteen twenty seven, it's gonna keep going higher and higher after this. Yeah. This is actually a really, really good chart, Dan. I think quite a few people mentioned um, SNX in the past few live streams. Quite a few. The daily looks pretty good too. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. I think if we close over twelve dollars and forty cents, um, this could very well see continuation to the upside. But I'll be looking for that twelve dollars and forty cent region to be taken out first. Let's look at the Bitcoin pairing, Kasha. SNX. It's going sideways against Bitcoin, which is actually pretty good. That means it's keeping up at Bitcoin. That's actually pretty impressive. Very impressive. Of course, oh, not um, doing, not outperforming Bitcoin, and uh, I don't think any coin is outperforming Bitcoin right now. Is Theta Theta outperforming Bitcoin? Theta, let's go and check it out. Theta Bitcoin. Mm. Mm, it did. It did for a while, from December all the way to the end of the year, which was pretty impressive on its own. Theta is really impressive, but um, of course, Bitcoin was too too strong, man. You can't expect these coins. Ollie, what's going on, man? Why are you on the beach so much these days? Making me jealous. Just because I left off for the beach for a month, you're like, I'm going to show Sean. You got to come back and play DBD with us. Hey, Amir, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you in here. 
Um, Hilary Butler says, I'm jelly flood in the grove. New this week. Very grateful I found your live stream. So perspective analysis. It helped me take my position and eliminate a lot of other chatter as I learn. Hey, good to hear. Good to hear, Hilary. Yeah. Really good to hear. I'm hoping to see you more active on um, the Discord. I'm going to try to be a little bit more active too. Recently, it's been a little bit more um, difficult for me to be active on the Discord because I'm trying to get through some more admin work that piled up while I was on vacation over the last month but um i'll start being far more active i am very active either way but more active than even usual but for those of you who are not on the discord definitely come out and join in lots of cool people joining in recently especially um so join in and get a nice friendly community to learn with yep peru balboa um is that uh a reference to Rocky Balboa. If so, hey, good to see you in here. Which indicators you use? You are great even without indicators. And um, okay, so th that's a, that's uh, something I do want to touch on. In the beginning, right when you're when you're new, it's best to use indicators that are good, of course. <laughs> but um, the reason you want to use them is because they will keep your objective. They will keep your emotions um, out of the picture because the indicator is the line in the sand. As you get better, as you mature you kind of are drawing out the indicators in your head and the indicator i used a lot when i started was um bitcoin right oh uh, sorry on, on bitcoin the indicator i used a lot was uh the ichimoku and i used it enough so much so that i was able to draw it out in my head i was able to actually picture out where the cloud would be would be would be getting drawn i would um know where the tank and the kitchen were likely coming in at if you guys go ahead and watch the videos from two years ago you guys will find many instances where i would be saying okay the kitchen's probably coming in over here let's go ahead and take a look and boom the kitchen was right over there and we got the retest over there blah 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 but that came only after a lot of time me using it and having a deep understanding of how the Ichimoku is even drawn, what it means, how it's calculated. So, by the way, Krisha did post two sections from yes. the seed module on the Ichimoku. So um, for all one of you, which is an introductory, and there is one. Okay, now I, I suggest you go and watch both, but there is one that is on the Tenkin. And that Sean does an absolutely, absolutely phenomenal job on that. So definitely go and check it out because that is really going to give you some insight into, well, what the Tenkin really is and more importantly, how powerful the Ichimoku can be. So um, definitely check that out. I'm going to try and link that actually in the description, description once the live stream is done. Yep. Yeah, so um, thank you, Krisha, for... Um sharing that excerpt with the <laughs> mango community and yeah well I, I forgot where i was going with this I, I i got a little bit distracted because somebody asked for the discord link and um yeah oh yeah he was asking about the um which indicators do i use and i primarily okay what i use is of course the ichimoku you guys um see me use it all the time and my depending on the type of market i'm trading the indicators i use are going to have more or less importance recently i've been using the mango dynamic a lot uh, very very aggressively because i needed the mango dynamic to fill the holes that i had with the mango vine personally for my trading style so now i'm using the mango vine a lot more too because i have the mango dynamic to back me up right um, for those of you on the C program, you guys uh, always uh, knew that I wasn't using it as much as um, like Krisha uses it, as Rob uses it, because it wasn't fully fitting my trading style, even though it fell, filled the holes that I needed out of it, right? So I was using it only on the higher time frames. But now, especially going into this altcoin rally and with Bitcoin also being parabolic, right, having a more aggressive trend, Bitcoin's kind of trending the way altcoins usually trend, right? Um, the mango dynamic helps fill those holes for me so the mango dynamic again is is um the culmination of various 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 things that i look at so um yeah, yeah. so major um, major things that you guys can look at is of course use the ichimoku another thing that i do like to look at are the oscillators um right over here right again it's not too helpful i use these as more of a uh, just to get a glimpse of the momentum of how things are going on but um, not you can't get too many buy or sell signals on this unless you know how to trade them properly yep um someone asks for Cotty. Cotty. Uh, this, this, this was one of the coins i was trading um last summer 
I think. And I think Cardi's actually looking good, Sean, if you want to pull that one up. I think um, we're approaching, we're trying to put in a cup and handle on the weekly time frame at the very least. But we have not broken, and I think that's something worth noting. I think if we start closing a weekly above five cents, um, this is likely going to see continuation to the upside. Cardi USDT, apologies. Not Cardi VDC. I think everything is getting annihilated against Bitcoin right now, so yeah. I'm not even going to try. Yeah, I... I, I mm, Sorry, go mm, on. Not too big of a fan of this, but um, not too bad either, right? The USD charts are being held up because of Bitcoin. Kusha, um, Crypto Kitty had a really nice comment to someone. I'm not sure who she said it to because I scrolled up a little bit and couldn't find the comment. But she says, and I gotta give her props for this, uh, Vishal, sorry, but you are asking a question that only you can answer. When you ask someone else what to do with your money, you're looking for someone to blame if it doesn't go in your favor. Learn. Wow, Crypto Kitty, that... that um... You get the basket of mangoes today yeah. for that one. Yeah, that is awesome. The damn basket. That was but, so well said. Well said. I think it was Crypto Kitty that said something really profound yesterday too. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was Crypto Kitty or, or if it was Janice. I do believe it was Crypto Kitty. She said something in the lines of, um, Sean, and, Sean and Krisha, you guys are a great team. And uh, it's so important to find someone that you can partner with that is in line with your life's goals. And that she had to let go of a few um, of her um, relationships because they did not gel with her goals of financial freedom. And that is so key too, guys. You have no idea how supportive Krisha has been to me during this entire journey, right? Because I had to give up on a lot of... Um, like. A lot of things that usually your family and your extended family and Krisha's family were looking at me and be like, why? Why would you quit your job? You work so hard to have everything you want. Um, but it wasn't what I wanted, right? They didn't get that. But either way, to to, to especially coming from the kind of um, background we have, your family's all looking at you and saying, I do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do this? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That support that I got from Krisha to follow um, this this itch i had for trading was just was um i needed it i needed it. i'm not sure whether i would have been able to uh go through it go through this journey without her so massive massive love and thank you to you krisha and to <laughs> to you guys at the community right i needed you guys too so find a community at the very least if you don't have a partner that's a-okay but you need a support system you need a support system no definitely and of course i'm always so this was a journey for both of us, you know, and, and what's important here is um, having the right sort of value system. And I got lucky in that I found Sean who had similar values as me. So it's always going to boil down to that ultimately. And then yep. kind of nothing else matters and you just kind of take it from there. And this was this has been so much fun and it's just going to get even more fun. Now you yeah. guys get to join in and that's why, you know, that community, that, that sense of um, relationship and bonding is very important, especially in a, in a, in a space like this in trading, because trading can get very lonely sometimes, right? So having a good sort of friendly community that's just going to be there is going to mean something when you really, really need it or when you're feeling down about, you know, trades or just being alone in the journey. That's why definitely come and join Mango. We're going to be here for you guys. Yep. We have some great people in the community that are also friendly and helpful. There's um, been a lot of um, help coming in from the community members to the newer traders um, on the Discord. So go ahead and join the Discord, guys. And do and uh, don't wait because we've already been talking about it. I've been talking about it to some of the mods, Ollie, uh, especially, as well as Krisha in regards to turning the Discord into a private channel going into this bull run because bull markets tend to attract the wrong crowd you guys are already kind of seeing hints of that right especially on the youtube chat the live chat we get a lot of spammers so we don't want any of that we don't want the community to grow too big we have no intention of reaching a hundred thousand subscribers or any of that it's great that you guys are subscribing of course because our um we do get a chance to meet even more gems right amongst the the bad there's always good people as well so uh but yeah we have we rather build our audience in the bear market <laughs> so <laughs> we're already preparing for the bear market that will inevitably come 
Yeah, you get some real gems in the bear market. Those are the guys yeah. who really want to like stick through, you know? They're here to learn. Yep. Dalvinder Singh says, how can I join the Mango family? Hey, just join the Discord link, man. Click the Discord link and hit the subscribe button and you're in the Mango family. Boom. Yeah, the Discord link is in, this, in the description. Just letting you guys know. Okay. Um, what else? Let's go scroll in through the comments. Found Austin Gardner one. just said, "What you what you said really resonated with me about sometimes the journey with trading can sometimes be quite lonely. Lately, I found a lot of peers in the community who don't seem to be very kind people, and I've been trying to find more positive and helpful role models in the space. Oh my God, Austin Gardner, so true, man, so true. And that's why we built Mango, and that's why we, you know." When we set out uh, to build the Mango community, one of the goals was to eliminate toxicity completely. You'll find out that in this space, there are so many elitists, people who want to put you down, people who are trying to show off. And none of that is helpful in a game that requires a good mindset and good psychology to begin with, right? Like that's the basics of the base of everything else you do in this game. And when your community and your support system is toxic, what the hell is the point of even trading this or playing this game? So at Mango, right from the start, we were very stern, even with our friends. We told them, listen, man, if you're going to talk like that, I'm going to, have to kick you out of the community. And I've had to do that to some of my friends. Like I've had to be an asshole and um, say, you got to go, man, because we don't tolerate that. We know how important it is to have a friendly system, a friendly arm um, community. And... Yep, yep, so true, man. So true, so true. Join, join, join the Discord, bud. You'll, you'll find, yeah. um, you'll find what you're looking for. We're trying to keep um, on top of, well, you know, the community and just making sure that it's friendly. John, I love the snow. Says any single ladies into crypto here? I'm looking for a crypto gal. <laughs> at, at least you're being open about it, man, and not being creepy like some people <laughs> out there. Out of boy, I'm um, gonna just go out there and ask for what you want, you know, and then you get what you want. Could you show us the basics of learning to read the charts, please? Thank you. Um, where do I start, man? We do daily videos every single day, so you could go ahead and just watch those. You'll pick it up. How far could the bear market be by Astro? Um, no one can tell you that. We'll have to wait and watch and see what price action tells us. Anyone who who's tells you that they can predict the next bear market or when it's going to hit us, that that's a red flag. Yeah, you can only kind of guess and look for the signs to validate your guess, right? So you make a hypothesis and then you're looking for the right signs. Because your hypothesis can't just be something like, oh, um, 16th of May <laughs> 2021, bear market is going to end there. You got to ask yourself why, and then you got to say, okay, if I think this is going to happen, so and so things need to align with that too, because there are going to be precursors to that happening, right? If this, then that, right? So if you're saying that, what's the if this, right? What's the if this for the that to happen? Then you start seeing the if this, then you're like, ah, right, cool, I'm seeing the signs. Now I can execute on the signs. So let's just keep it simple. We are, we are, we are not oracles here, guys. We know nothing, and you guys know nothing either. That's the... You know nothing, Jon Snow. Who yeah, knows? you know nothing. <laughs> okay, so someone's asked for Wi-Fi, Sean. I think Wi-Fi is doing something right now. I think it's looking... Um, it's looking good. Check it out. Wi-Fi USDT one day. If this breaks 40,000, 37,000 to be um, a retested major level. Just a retested major level. <laughs> Just saying the price out loud, is it makes me laugh. I, I remember remember when this move happened, Krisha, all the way from around 7,000 to um, 40,000. What I tell you guys in Seed, I told you guys, this is what I said specifically. I'm like, take a look at what's happening with Wi-Fi because that's ex you all are getting a precursor. It, it, you guys are getting a precursor, a glimpse into what's going to happen with Bitcoin. The volatility, right? Especially the volatility and the numbers. You guys are getting a glimpse of what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And it is ridiculous how true that has been. Because Bitcoin's sitting at $40,000 now, right? Yeah. And Wi-Fi was giving everybody a idea of what Bitcoin can do that's going to shock everyone. But it's not really shocking because the price is irrelevant, right? The actual dollar value is irrelevant for the markets to actually push up higher and higher. 
you guys should always look at the number and divide it by a number that makes you guys um, more comfortable with it. So for Wi-Fi, for example, don't look at this as $40,000. Divide it by $1,000 and say, hey, it's only $3.6, right? A lot easier that way. Man, this one's just, and that's that's the thing, right? A lot of people, uh, and you're, you're, you're so right. Like, Sean actually warned, not warned, but he, he basically pointed everyone to the Wi-Fi chart. And, you know, to tell them that this is the precursor to what Bitcoin could possibly do. And that's the thing, when these things move, they don't give you a chance. Like, Bitcoin has been bloody relentless. Yep. Think about it, we've been ripping even before 20k. We're currently, we, we hit 40k yesterday. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if Wi-Fi breaks the structure, by the way, Krisha. It could go to 60,000. Look at the weekly chart. It looks um, really good. It, it looks really good. It's a bullish chart. Very, very good chart. Also, for those of you, you know, want to learn, we're showing you what we're looking for in, you know, to, to really kind of figure out whether a chart is bullish or not. Okay, so these are the little, little signs. We're looking at structure. We're looking at things like, you know, a break. We're looking at whether it has a an established uptrend. So these are the things that you want to see on a good chart. If your chart is not trending anywhere um, relative to USDT, that's likely going to end up being opportunity cost for you. What is that Wi-Fi Bitcoin? So Wi-Fi, the easy trade against the Bitcoin trade is going to be above 1.5 um, BDC, 1.5 to 1.6 BDC. I just um, uh, drew some key levels, Krisha. It's, it's just really roughly drawn, but it's not easy. The trade is not easy until one of two things happen. We just have an impulsive move and break past 1.5, 1.7-ish, or we start actually trending against these levels over here, put in a higher low somewhere around uh, 0.8 BDC, right? essentially this high over here you're looking for and then again you can rebuy somewhere around here this level would be a, a opportunity to buy it around 0 0.9 0 0.1 bdc sorry 1 bdc and then you trade the trend hoping for it to break um the 1.5 bdc 1.6 bdc the retest would be a buy opportunity of that level and that's the easy trade for possible possible new highs after we break the 0 2.0 bdc mark it's crazy to even say yeah. these numbers out loud <laughs> <laughs> oh god um what else uh jose garcia says it's tron a good coin i mean the chart we're still kind of consolidating on the weekly so we went over that yesterday you can check out yesterday's um live stream and mm, we do no. pull up tron there but nothing special i think it's in a weekly consolidation until yeah. we break um resistance overhead i don't think tron is going anywhere we need to break first all right, cool. So we can wrap up with these just last few questions. Blake Fraser is asking for Ren. Um, let's go ahead and look at Ren. Ren and we can I, do oh, Sorry, go on. I really like the Ren chart, um, especially on the weekly time frame. We're looking at this consolidation over here. It's not ready just yet. You could be looking to be buying the higher lows and build a position along this diagonal over here. But be a little bit more careful. I am looking at the weekly right now, so the volatility might be um, something to contend with. Um, losing the 0.23 low over here would make me look for a move all the way down to 0.16. Ren doesn't want that. The Ren, the Ren bulls at the very least want to hold two major horizontals coming in right over here at 0.23, of course, in terms of candle closes. You're seeing that def get defended twice already, so that's a good sign. Another level at 0.19 is going to be really, really important. But the easiest trade, in my opinion, is going to be um, building the higher low position and then uh, breaking 0 0.44 on the weekly time frame, getting the retest of 0 0.44, looking for continuation past 0 0.60. We take out 0 0.60, even the high is taken out after breaking the horizontal over here of 0 0.44. This is going to make new highs, man. This is going to be um, a really, really volatile it's chart. It's a beautiful chart, though. It's we can look for beautiful chart. a move all the way up to around 0 0.75 after that and possibly higher. Possibly higher. So that's rent. Um, yeah, so with that, Kusha, I'm going to wrap it up here. We can look at one inch quickly. We covered it yesterday, but, um, oops, not the one minute chart. I hate looking at one inch because it's so hard to freaking type, right? These, these guys did not make it easy to, ah, uh, there you go. 
Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just gonna stop looking at this freaking chart. It's so annoying to type. Yeah. yeah. All right, it so if it breaks, a uh, breaks a dollar, they, it, they try to be cool, and all they do at, in the end of the day was make it hard to, to trade it. Because you can't type the ticker on trading view. Yeah. You can save it, I guess, but uh, I guess I'm being a little bit more. No, no, but that's the thing, though. Remember yeah, that freaking uh, bull market? So we had a bunch of, there were so many new entrants, and they thought they were getting into Ethereum, but in fact, they were getting into Ethereum Classic. Yeah. And I thought that was freaking hilarious. But, you know, that's what happens when um, they kind of, you know, play around with the names. I don't know about one inch. Um, it's, I'm not sure if there's more price history elsewhere. This this is a little bit... I don't like that it broke past this level over here at zero point, at 1.38 and get it back up immediately and it's living underneath that structure. Like, I'm not... It could be doing something else completely and might be doing something like this now. Right, so let's see how it uh, whether we see continuation if it breaks 1.53 after that. But there are better shots, easier shots to play. Yeah, um, Crypto Kitty just said something. She says, I refuse to stop and give up on my family. For Christmas, I bought five of them $200 worth of Bitcoin. It will be in my account, and until they make a wallet for me to transfer it to them, profits and all. Wow, that's the that's best awesome. gift. You that could get is, anyone. Ooh, yeah, that is freaking awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. Really good for you. That's mango. Yeah, good that's stuff. so mango. That's bloody awesome. But yeah. You ready to wrap this up, my good sir? Um, yeah. You, you know what, Crypto Kitty? I'm going to... Um, for, for, for you being so generous to your family, we're going to give you six months of um, access to the dashboard as our Christmas gift to you. So uh, shoot Krisha a PM and she'll set you up. And notice how I I I I, I put um I put the work on Krisha, so I I get to sit back <laughs> and play video games. <laughs> yeah, definitely um uh, message me on Discord or you can even um you know contact me via email. It's Krisha at mangoresearch.co. I think Sean's email is there as well, but um, definitely. Hit us an email and I will hook you up. Yep. Good people get um, good karma and you've been a consistent commenter underneath our videos for a very, very long time. Um, like I said, it doesn't go unnoticed and um, you've just been a solid person all around. So please go ahead and shoot Krisha PM on Discord. Yes, please. All right. So um, with that, Krisha, I am really, really, really freaking hungry. <laughs> we we got to order a platter of um, meat today somewhere if there's no meat at home. I'm feeling steak. But um, yeah, steak and some cocktails. Let's unwind for the weekend. Guys, you know, I had a really, really um, strong urge to um, stream this like casual stream. No chart analysis last night. So maybe we do that tonight, this evening, of course. Uh, We'll just be sitting back and having a few cocktails. So maybe I'll see you guys later this evening. Maybe play some video games. You guys can watch me play some DBD or some Pralhada. So yeah, um, enjoy your weekend, guys. It is going to be a fantastic, fantastic year. 2020 was um, crappy. In, well, it was, it was a great time to be in the markets, right? And again, as traders, we were blessed that way. I hope 2021 is not just uh, going to be about the markets again because the markets have been phenomenal, like Jesus Christ, more than phenomenal. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we all get to go out, enjoy the beach, enjoy the vacation, enjoy the gardens, enjoy the mountains, enjoy the sky. But um, yeah, guys. Ooh, Ubina, do you play DBD? Oh, that, that'd be nice, man. You can Notice watch how me. you caught on to that comment. Yeah. <laughs> <You> play DBD? <laughs> yeah. All you hear is Sean shouting from his room. He's getting killed or hung by some monster. It's crazy. No, no. that That's only when I play with Ollie because he's so freaking bad at the game and I, I got to yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he's in here. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but uh, Crypto Kitty, please do shoot me that message on Discord or email. You've been absolutely phenomenal in all on all of our, our comment sections on many of the videos, not just the live streams. So we need to give you something for that. All right, guys, with that, um, Kusha, any uh, final words? Do you want to... Uh, no, just trade safely, guys. Trade stress-free and, um, yeah, just calm, you know. This is this is a volatile market. Take it as it goes and be calm, all right? And if you need some support, come on out and join the Discord chat and we will all be there. 
Yep. Okay. I'm taking a quick look at Bitcoin before we wrap up. Remember, guys, we're looking at psychological resistance at around forty thousand dollars. Middle of the range is around thirty-six thousand dollars, which is pretty much Krisha's level that she did talk about a few days ago. Bottom of the range is thirty-four thousand um, dollars. Bitcoin isn't in any trouble until it actually loses thirty-three thousand dollars, which in in which case it's likely going to only do have a midterm downtrend. It's going to happen eventually, anyways. A midterm, um, lower time frame to midterm downtrend, um, but the weekly time frames are likely going to get bought back on the first sign of a higher low we don't know where that's going to come in that could come in deep it could come in high but we'll have information when it does get set in right kind of like how we got that information on this candle over here guys when we closed above all those levels 16,200 17,200 18,200 19,200 that was a big sign for the big 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 long and hey not not just a long right i bought spot there too like aggressively because jesus christ man and boom we had the big move similarly now the charts give you information. Let's go ahead and wait for the next big, big, big sign. Does 50,000 get plowed through or do we see 40,000 as a front run to 50,000? And um, is this our local top at the very least? We don't know. We'll find out. That's Bitcoin. Ethereum, on the other hand, guys, sitting at around that $12,200 resistance that we did talk about uh, since a very, very long time. We got that from our weekly levels. Just zoom out right over here. 12,230 close the daily underneath unfortunately if we had closed above and confirmed above we'd have been looking for the move to 13,050 ish not there just yet got to be patient if you look at the theme on the lower time frames rather the mid time frames it's volatile move or to down move was more volatile than bitcoin buy opportunity at that 1050 ish level that again krisha was talking about her levels are key make sure you note them down because um it did line up in the mango dynamic as well, actually. Yep, 12 hour right there. All right, so with that, guys, do it the mango way, do it the stress free way. <laughs> Any final thoughts, Kusha? No, that's all. Have a good weekend, you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Ciao. Ciao. Secrets to migrate Cause you are the only one